is Jared Theory of Dragon from RDA. Got another review today. This one is of the Marushan Derringer, and I can guarantee you, you've never seen one of these out on your field. It's a very interesting, cool pistol, and um, well, it's a Derringer. What more can you really say? But let's continue on with the review. The box is a pretty flashy, standard Marushan uh, box. It tells you everything you need to know, really, even on the box, without even looking at the instruction manual, because it has instructions on the box, but whatever. Let's go ahead and open up the box. All right, the box is open. Here's what you get in the box. You get a instruction manual, either both written in Japanese and English, and there is no Chinglish in this instruction manual. It is actually pretty, pretty well translated English. And then you get the gun. There's really not much to it. Oh, and you get a small pack of BBs in here. There's about 50 of them. They're .2s, and they're good enough to use. And the BBs are actually wrapped in bubble wrap so they don't break and go all over your box. Uh, during shipping, but note they're good enough to use. And here's the gun, and that's really all you get because the gun is so simple. And the gun, when you get it in the box, will be totally wrapped in bubble wrap. So there it is. When you first get the gun, it will actually come with two orange barrel plugs, which you can just pull right out of the gun. I don't know why, but I kind of found that funny that it comes with two barrel plugs in both the barrels. But I guess by U.S. law, that's what you have to do to stay legal. Let's go ahead and get this box out of the way. Now I'm actually going to play a clip here that I recorded for the accuracy test, and it's in the accuracy test, and that's just of this shooting down range, but it tells you practically everything you need to know. Uh, let's go ahead and play that clip, and then come right back inside. Alright, so now we are all the way back at 150 feet. This is the furthest range we got. I'm not going to be shooting accurately. I'm just going to be shooting down range, showing you what this thing looks like when you're shooting it. Again, this is a, a tiny, tiny pistol, but it's really cool. I mean, this is one of those things. In-game, the only practical use out of it is a backup for your backup. Out of game, it's a cool collector's item that's affordable and very nicely made. Uh, it's affordable because Marushin, I think, is starting to make stuff in Taiwan because this was obviously this was made in Taiwan. Um, so let's hope they keep that up. But I've got it gassed up. Let's go ahead and load it. How you load it is you flip the switch down and around, lift that up. Since, as you can see, this is what I mean by the over/under design. Kind of makes it hard to aim. Um, but fold that up. Put two BBs. Pretty much just put two BBs on here. You don't need to push them in. Uh, if you push the BBs actually into the hop unit, it doesn't shoot as well. You just kind of set them there. Close that up. Flip that around and lock it. And you're ready to go. Uh, something to show you. That's the safety. Nothing happens. Turn it off safe and let's shoot it. As you can see, 150 feet is way out of the range of this thing. It can hit that back wall, but you're kind of lobbing it. Let's go ahead and load two more in. And then uh, that'll be it for the shooting of this thing. And there you go. All right, now we're back inside. I zoomed in on the gun so you can see the finer details of the gun. Uh, the construction of the gun is very, very nice. The whole gun is actually made out of ABS plastic. However, it kind of fools you. I, for the longest time, I tried to figure out uh, whether the lower receiver was actually metal or not. So the ABS plastic is very, very high quality. And don't worry about the ABS plastic breaking on you. The only parts of this that are metal are parts that need to be metal, i.e. the hammer, uh, the trigger, the safety and release lever on this side, which needs to move and that needs to be me needs to be metal, and then the actual latch, which keeps this in place on the underside. So those parts are metal. Oh, also this piece here, which I'll explain what that does in a second. But those parts are metal, so the parts that need to be metal are metal, uh, and everything else is ABS plastic. But very, very, very nice construction of the gun. Uh, speaking of nice construction, the hammer itself actually has some serrates on the top there so that when you go to pull back the hammer, your finger doesn't slip and you don't do one of, uh, you don't do one of these things. It's actually, see, it's actually hard to do since it's serrated, but, you know, do something like that and actually accidentally fire the gun uh, so that serrates are actually there for a reason and it's very good. Like I said, I mean, I was intentionally trying to get my thumb to slip off and I couldn't. Uh, same thing with the grips, just to add you some extra grip, they have uh, nice 
well, grips on the grip. On both sides it's like that. And for a gun that's so small, it's actually decently comfortable. Uh, of course it's nowhere near as comfortable as your full-size handgun, uh, but I mean this gun is small. A very, very, very small. And here's an example of how small it is. So here's the Derringer in comparison to your standard M9. This is an HFC M9. It's the uh, standard size to Tokimuri, and here's the size. It's overall a very, very small pistol compared to the M9. So that's the size compared to an M9. Here's its size compared to your standard high cap of 4.3. This is an ACM Extreme 45, the semi-auto semi -auto ones, which is still available at RDA, reddragonairsoft.net. But here's the size compared to a standard high cap of 4.3. This is 100% token compatible. We're getting smaller. Here's comparison to the ACM PPK. And you've probably seen some of these out at your local Walmart or something like that. Really crappy Springer Colt 25 type things. But here's a comparison to the Springer Colt 25. This thing is actually smaller than the Springer Colt 25. So this is just to give you an idea of how small this gun actually is. To be fair, this gun is not very practical to take out onto the field. I mean, this is the backup for your backup. Really, the main practical use I can think out of it is maybe you do a game where you would become a prisoner and you keep this one stashed away and you can escape. And I do know games that go out and do that, a lot of Milsom games are like that. Um, but that's the only practical use I can think of it. Other than that though, it's a very affordable gun. I mean, it's a cool collector's item and it's an affordable gun, it's under $100. If you're going to complain about the price of this gun, uh, you should probably get out of Airsoft because it's, it's not that cheap of a hobby and this is very affordable. Moving on, like I said in the shooting videos, the way you take it apart, just flip this down and around. It has to be all the way around. If it's like this, this will still not lift. It has to be all the way up there to unlock the barrels. So don't try to force it if it's not all the way up here. It will break it. Uh, but yeah, that's how you load it. It's the over-under design. Uh, that makes it a little bit hard to aim because you got one barrel on top of the other and the sights can only be lined up for really uh, one of them or in between them. So you might be shooting over or under your target a little bit. So just adjust to that. Uh, this gun is actually fairly accurate for how small it is. You can hit a man-sized target at 100 feet away. That's about the max range you can get. But this gun, surprisingly enough, it can even shoot that far. This gun's gas container, the reservoir, is only about that big. I mean, it's very, very small, so it only shoots about 180 feet per second with a .2. So the fact that you're really accurately able to hit things at 100 feet away with the two shots you got is very, very surprising. Uh, so the hop units do a very good job. The hop units aren't adjustable. The hop units, you can actually see them right in the barrels. The hop units are there, uh, and they're fixed hop units, and they do their job perfectly fine. Now, something kind of cool, like I mentioned, the safety is over here. It's part of this lever. If you flip it down, there's two notches right there. Flip one down, and it locks everything up. Um, well, that means over here, which would usually be the safety on a real derringer, does nothing except there's a tiny screw on this side of it and you can flip it around you can kind of see all this. Uh, if you unscrew that, you can actually pull both the hop units and this whole piece right up and out of the barrel, uh, right out of the, the outer barrels, which is kind of cool, so you can basically just replace everything all at once. So assuming Marushin will continue to release parts of this, you can fix it relatively easily. The sights are decent sights, but they're nothing too special. You would, shouldn't really be expecting too much out of a Derringer. Uh, like I mentioned, the sights can be a little bit hard to line up because of the over-under design. This gun does have trademarks, although they're not the real trademarks. They just say uh, Marushin Industry Company, LTD, and that's all it really says. That's the only trademarks you get. Uh, but it's a nice finishing touch to add to the gun. The gun itself is single action. You pull the hammer back per every shot and then pull the trigger, which releases it. Uh, something to note, the bottom barrel fires first, the upper barrel fires second. Uh, note that. Something else you may have noticed, it says made in Taiwan. Marushin is a Japanese company, but it is made in Taiwan, uh, which explains why the price is so low for it. Um, I'm hoping Marushin is going to continue making stuff in Taiwan because they make some good products, but they're really expensive because they're made in Japan and they want to keep the quality up, i.e. actual wood and steel, which if you want to make that stuff in Japan is going to be really, really costly for the consumer. So hopefully they'll continue to make stuff in Taiwan. All right, now I've covered absolutely everything on this gun. 
It's a very, very cool gun. It's kind of a collector's item. If you want to pick one of these up, there's a link down below to RDA's website and the video information. There's also a link down below to RDA's, web to RDA's forum where you can talk to the community. So with that said, that has been RDA's review for the Marushan Derringer in 6mm.